Now, we had organised to talk to you about uh, Trump's days in court, but uh, we will talk about that in a moment. But of course, overnight, we've had that terrible tragedy in Baltimore. Um, Maybe you can tell our listeners exactly what is believed to have happened. Well, right now it's the Francis Scott Key, or was the Francis Scott Key Bridge, uh, just outside the port of Baltimore. At about 1 o'clock, a cargo ship, uh, the Dally, that uh, was uh, was flying the flag of Singapore, uh, was heading out of the port. It hit one of the uh, pillars of the bridge. The bridge immediately collapsed into the Patapsco River. Now, uh, on the scene, uh, rescuers have pulled two people out of the water. They say that they're looking for maybe seven, but authorities are now saying that there could be at least 20 people uh, that could be in the water. Now time is very critical. The water temperature is about 48 degrees Fahrenheit, so there's about a three- to four-hour window of survival if someone is in that water. Now, the Francis Scott Key Bridge, I mean, it's a very long bridge, um, and it appears to me, just looking at some of the TV pictures and some of the maps, it seems to be an absolutely vital bridge for the Port of Baltimore. Oh, absolutely. It's on Interstate 695, which is a major interstate heading into Baltimore and ultimately heading into Washington. It would be used by commuters. It's used by truckers uh, to uh, go through that section of the mid-Atlantic. So, yes, this is going to be not only a human tragedy of the people who lost their lives or may have lost their lives in the accident, but this is going to cripple the city of Baltimore for the foreseeable future. It's hard to understand how this accident happened, particularly when the ship was making its way out of port. I mean, had it been coming into port, perhaps, you know, tired crew and so on. But when you're just beginning your journey, you'd imagine the crew would be quite alert. Um, Right. And now this is, I'm sorry. Yeah, go on. No, please explain, Terry, if you can. Well, again, everything's in the preliminary stages and we're getting conflicting information. But one of the things that the investigators are focusing on, it appears that the lights on the ship went out right before it hit the bridge. Now, again, that is what uh, uh, people who are analyzing the video are saying, a few eyewitnesses. So could it be that the ship lost power as it was pulling out of the port and then drifted into the bridge. That's something that investigators are going to be focusing on. But absolutely, fatigue should not have been a problem uh, in, in this incident. The other uh, question, of course, is the structure of the bridge itself. Um, I mean, when I saw the video of the bridge going down, it seemed so delicate that taking one pier out demolished quite a large section of the bridge and the piers themselves, I would have expected them to be of stout concrete construction, but that does not appear to be so. No, I mean, the bridge is relatively new. It was built in the 1970s. It was completed and open to traffic in 1977. But with the cantilever um, uh, building method or, or construction method, yes, you take out one of the pillars and then the bridge will fall and then gravity takes over. So, again, that is a weakness of cantilever bridges. But I'm sure that the quality of the of the materials, the workmanship on the bridge is going to be looked into as well. Mm. The ownership of the vessel and responsibility then, Terry? The ownership of the vessel, again, it's uh, a company out of Singapore that was renting it, the Dolly. Um, is there going to be, yes, um, there's going to be serious ramifications for the company. But what we understand right now is that it was leased. Um, we don't know what it was taken out of the port. We know we saw the cargo uh, trailers, you know, stacked on it. But we don't know as of now, Not we don't know what was what was leaving the port. How significant is the port of Baltimore in terms of import and export from the United States? It's very significant. It's the ninth largest port in the States, but it's also the first, uh, the major port in shipping out or shipping in automobiles and light trucks. So again, this is going to be a problem. And then obviously right now you have a bridge, a, a mile and a half long bridge that's blocking the river. So this basically shuts down the port of Baltimore for the foreseeable future. Um, have people already been talking about what the alternative routes are? I mean, Is there a way around, uh, there's got to be, to another bridge, but maybe that bridge would not be uh, blessed with the capacity to handle this kind of traffic? 
Well, there are other bridges around Baltimore. Baltimore is built uh, uh, surrounded by water. That's why the port is so big. You have I-95 that goes through Baltimore. You have several other roads. You have the uh, uh, Chesapeake Bay Bridge and Tunnel. So, yes, there are other routes. It's just going to be uh, a massive – when I say inconvenience, that's obviously, you know, doesn't sum up the tragedy – but yes, for the foreseeable future, this is going to be a, a major change uh, to the life of both Baltimore Port, but also Baltimore citizens.